Tired of sitting in traffic every day like a loser? Well, lucky for you, I might just have the perfect ride to get you out of that. It's so powerful. You bet it is. Hmm, you think it's kind of over the top? I see. And this one? It's pretty handy for cleaning up the backyard. Too aggressive? Okay. What about this one? You can even use it for farming. You don't have to answer me right now. While you're thinking it over, let me tell you a bit more about them. I've got other models too. You might be surprised, but these vehicles were originally designed to clear minefields. Yeah, crazy, right? The first one we've got here is the Mine Flail, an old school system. Check out this Sherman Crab from World War II. It's pretty simple, as you can see. A rotor with a bunch of chains, each with a metal weight on the end, spins like crazy, hitting the ground. Usually, it's a purpose-built vehicle, because if you just slap a flail onto a tank, the driver ends up way too close to the blasts. This beast is the M1271 mine clearing vehicle used by the US Army. It has 70 chains with hammers and spins at 3,500 RPM. This is the Kyler, made by the German company Rheinmetall. It was built on the chassis of the American M48 tank because it's stable and doesn't have weak weld points, but they swapped out the engine for a newer, more powerful one. It's got 24 chains with weighted ends, known as elephant feet. The chains are attached to two rotors, and they rotate to throw the mines forward. Some can be thrown dozens of feet to the side, so yeah, better keep your distance. During operation, it moves about 650 to 2,300 feet per hour, depending on the terrain. That's about 385 feet every 10 minutes, clearing a 15-foot wide lane. Because of all the armor and dust, the driver can barely see anything while clearing mines, so they're guided by radio. From what they said, it's pretty claustrophobic. In 2023, Germany donated several of these to Ukraine, the most heavily mined place in the world right now. On the downside, it can only detonate mines buried up to about 10 inches deep, and some, like this one, are designed not to go off with a flail. It's not very effective on uneven, rocky, super dry, or swampy terrain. The moving parts, especially the chains, require a lot of maintenance. Plus, it's super loud and kicks up a ton of dust, which makes it easy for the enemy to spot. But if you're after speed, low maintenance, and want to avoid tearing up the terrain, a great alternative is the mine roller. This device mounted on the front of the vehicle. It's not very heavy, but it has hydraulic actuators that apply significant pressure to the ground through solid tires, triggering mines and improvised explosive devices. And when the wheels get damaged, they are easily replaced. The same hydraulic system raises the device when it is not in use. The system is modular and can be adapted to a wide range of vehicles, but it's fixed in place, so it turns along with the vehicle when it steers. This one is for tanks, with very heavy wheels that apply more ground pressure than tracks. Mine rollers are mainly used to detect mines, then to get through that minefield, you're gonna want a vehicle with a mine plow. The mine plow turns over the soil, flipping the mines and pushing them out of the way, usually without detonating them. Since modern anti-tank mines rely on a concentrated explosion to destroy a vehicle, when they are turned upside down, if triggered, they will detonate against the ground. Those arms with metal skis up front are what support the plow. By adjusting the arms, operators can control how deep the plow digs into the soil. You probably already knew this one from the US, but check out this one from Germany, the Kalar Next Generation by Rheinmetall, unveiled to the public in 2024. It's built on the Leopard 2 chassis. The mine plow is over 13 feet wide and can clear mines at speeds of up to 820 feet per minute. And this is the British Trojan. Some downsides of the mine plow are that it doesn't actually blow up the mines, it just pushes them out of the way. Plus, it needs more engine power when it's added to a regular tank. But on the flip side, it lets you get through a minefield quickly, and it's a simple system that doesn't need much maintenance. But if you want to clear a minefield fast, keep your team safe, and make sure the area is actually cleared, I'd go with this one. To destroy explosives, nothing better than more explosives. This is the M1150 Assault Breacher vehicle, using an M58 mine clearing line charge. It looks like it's tossing sausages. The system can be set up on a trailer, the M60 AVLB, or the M1150. It fires a rocket that pulls a nylon rope packed with 700 C4 explosive charges, leaving a safe distance from the vehicle. Then the explosives go off, clearing a path about 330 feet long and 26 feet wide. The shockwave blows up landmines with regular fuses and wipes out barricades, no matter what kind of terrain it is. But there are two problems. The impulse is greatest 10 feet away on either side of the line charge and decreases as it moves closer, reaching a minimum at 3 feet. Thus, mines buried more than 4 inches deep and located 3 to 6.5 feet from the line charge have a high probability of not being neutralized. And the second problem is blast-resistant mines. They've got a fuse mechanism, some use an air system, that sets them off when there's steady, gradual pressure. But if there's a sudden shock, like from a line charge, the fuse locks up and doesn't trigger. 
And that's why vehicles like the M1150 also have a plow. It pushes any mines that didn't go off out of the way or flips them over. The mine plow also helps save the explosives for more critical situations, since each M58 mine clearing line charge costs around $83,000. On the downside, there's the cost of the charge, the logistics of handling both the explosives and the special launches, and it might leave some mines undetonated along the edges of the cleared path. Plus, it's anything but subtle. It totally gives away your position to the enemy. Several countries besides the US also use the mine clearing line charge system. Germany's got the Kyler Next Generation from Rhein Metall, the one we looked at earlier. It can clear a path that's 525 feet long and 30 feet wide. The possibility of remote controlled deployment is already taken into account in the system's concept. The Kyler NG is also equipped with a magnetic signature duplicator that detonates second-generation mines well before the plow. This is the Python minefield breaching system used by the British Army. Mounted on a trailer, it can clear a path between 590 and 660 feet long and 24 feet wide. It replaced the old giant Viper, which was developed back in the 1950s. This one's from China, the GSL-130. It can clear a path through a minefield that's about 330 feet long and 13 to 16.4 feet wide. South Korea's got this one on a trailer. And this one is from the Soviet era, the UR-77 meteorite. It's operated by both Russia and Ukraine. It's loaded with two line charges, each 295 feet long, that can be launched by a rocket up to 550 yards away. You can see it doesn't have to stay connected to the vehicle, it's detonated remotely. Besides using the UR-77 to detonate mines and barricades, Russia also uses it to destroy buildings and directly attack enemy positions, just like they're doing in Ukraine. In 2013, they rolled out its successor, the UR-07M, which can launch its charge up to 0.6 miles. And of course, they've also got a portable version. There's also a portable version that's carried in a backpack. It's mainly used to clear narrow paths for dismounted infantry and clears a path about 147 feet long and 3.3 feet wide. It's kind of like launching a New Year's firework, except this one blows up on the ground and hits a whole lot harder. And if you don't want people crossing the minefield, there are plenty of robot versions that can do the job instead. Like this one from the company Docking. They come in different sizes. This is the MV2, the smallest one. It clears a path 4.26 feet wide and up to 6.3 inches deep. Now this one is the MV4, it clears a path 6 feet wide and up to 14 inches deep. You can also swap out the flail system for a mine roller. You can even attach a claw to remove explosives. This one is the M160 robotic mine flail, used by the US Army. It's a variation of the MV4. And this beast right here is the MV10 Bison, also remotely operated. It clears a path 8 feet wide and up to 16 inches deep. This is the demining robot from Switzerland. It's not that big, but it can handle anti-tank mines. This is the GCS-200 from another Swiss company. Several units are currently operating in Ukraine. And this one is the Uran-6 from Russia. It clears a six-foot wide path and can operate for up to five hours. It's equipped with four video cameras and can be remotely operated from up to 0.6 miles away. If it looks a lot like the MV-4 to you, that's because the company Docking sold the rights and transferred the technology to Russia several years ago. Nowadays though, there are quite a few differences between them. Recently the British Army presented this prototype. It is a plow that can be attached to the front of any compatible armored vehicle. Equipped with a remote control system and vehicle mounted cameras, it transforms the vehicle into a robotic mine clearing machine, allowing the crew to operate safely from miles away. So, which one are you going for? One of these M1150s costs 14 million dollars. It's not that much. This Lamborghini Veneno costs 13.9 million dollars. But in traffic like this, I'd bet the M1150 is faster. 